Welcome. You're listening to the Drink a Little podcast, where we talk about exploring the world of wine and spirits while not letting it take over your life. My name is Kelly Doherty. I'm a joyful child of God and a certified life coach. I'm also a wine educator and a wine and spirits brand designer. I'll show you how you can navigate your relationship with alcohol and how that mindset spills over into the rest of your life. We'll learn about the world of wine and spirits together, all while bolstering your confidence that you can have boundaries around alcohol and live your most amazing life. This is episode number four, Educated Guests. Napa County Cabernet Sauvignon. And today we're going to talk about making an educated guess in developing a drinking plan ahead of time. But first, how this works is we taste a little and we see how the story of this wine called Educated Guess leads us into talking about the amazing benefits of making a plan when starting something new. So if you are watching on YouTube, you can see the beautiful label. If you are on the podcast, that's amazing. Go to the grocery store. This is a very commercially available brand. Even if you don't see the cab, they have a Pinot Noir and some other varietals. But it's so fun and sciencey. It really catches your eye with kind of a black chalkboard look with chalk molecules all over it, reminiscent of organic chemistry. Amazing. <laughs> And as I'm recording this, teachers are just going back to school, and in a few weeks, the kids will be in the thick of it. So this wine might be very appropriate for the teacher in your life, if you're looking for a gift. And if you really break this down, um, the label is so fun. It, it portrays the reductive process of making a red wine, and that's really taking extra care to make sure it has the minimal amount of oxygen exposure during the process. And the point of that is to retain the freshest fruit character of the grape. So let us taste and see what their science tastes like. And the first thing I do notice is juicy. For sure. Um, juicy blackberry, black currant. When you breathe in, this is, you can tell it's very high alcohol. It's 14.5% on the label, but it doesn't give you that alcoholic burn in your throat. So that is lovely, and I'm appreciating that. Um, the alcohol level and the oak give this great ageability. It's perfect to drink right now, but can age well in the bottle. And this is kind of your big red, your beef, your lamb, that type of red wine. But I do also get some delicate aging notes like sweet tobacco and, and dark chocolate. I don't say those two terms, sweet tobacco and dark chocolate, to imply any sweetness. These are flavors I'm getting, and this is definitely a dry Napa cab. And so when I say cab, there, I mean, when I say Napa, there is something else to note on the label. This is Napa County. Nothing to complain about there, but I want you to have awareness around the difference between Napa County and Napa Valley. It's just interesting. Napa Valley sounds huge, but it's really inside of Napa County, and it's a third of the size. So Napa Valley is maybe 30 miles long and five miles wide at its widest point. So my educated guess as to why they created this as a Napa County wine is that since they want it commercially available and to be consistent over years, um, the weather events that can happen each season might affect individual vineyards differently. And so year to year, they need to be able to have a lot of different vineyard sites across the county to mitigate any weather risks in any given year. And the other thing that people do to create a consistent product over time is to blend different varieties of grapes. So even though this says 2021 Cabernet Sauvignon, it has a small quantities of special other grapes that make it more balanced. This actually has 10% Merlot and 5% Malbec added to the 85% Cab. That Merlot is going to help kind of soften the tannins of a high tannin Cabernet and maybe give you a little more red fruit characteristics. 
And then a Malbec actually deepens the color and adds complexity, even with that little 5%, that's its job in the blend. So I'm guessing that how much they put in of each variety changes a little bit each year based on the winemaker's very educated guess. How much she or he puts in of each variety really does matter. And interestingly, today's coaching topic is really around the topic of how much. All of that to say, I've noticed that how much is something people ask me around their drinking. How much should I be drinking? And the beautiful part about being an adult is there's no perfect or right answer to that. You intellectually know that everyone is different, and in this case, physically different. I mean, different metabolism, different physiology, different medications we might be on that change over time. Weight that changes over time, of course. And hydration levels and food you've eaten that day or food you plan to eat while consuming alcohol all have an impact on how much that affects your system. And you know this. Um, so I can't give you that perfect answer of how much for you. And I will give you an example of how people can be different and you don't see it. I have disturbingly low blood pressure. I go into the doctor's office and it's like they need to retest their machine. They think something is wrong with the machine. They're wondering how I'm still walking around. And alcohol consumption lowers your blood pressure a little bit temporarily. And I know you're thinking, well, it must be nice. Everyone else has high blood pressure. And that's all well and good until my blood pressure is so low that when I stand up quickly, I pass out having nothing to do with the type of passing out people normally associate with alcohol. So I am very mindful of my body and how I'm feeling at all times. And it changes my choices. Um, You only have to pass out one time for that to happen. And I don't. I don't attempt to compare myself to other people or even actually listen to what any outside authority might recommend for alcohol consumption. So there are two ways to approach this question of how much with an educated guess, and those ways are intuition and knowledge. And the first is intuition. You have to listen to your body. We all have something going on that we need to be mindful of. And our bodies are always changing. You may have noticed this with age. Please tell me I am not alone. (laughs) As we age, food and alcohol has different effects on us. And we can look at that with curiosity and love and compassion. Listen to your body so that you have the data to make an educated guess about how much you want to drink. And the second educated guess approach is knowledge. It's asking yourself empowering questions. And when people ask me that question, how much should they be drinking? They're really asking the wrong question. There are more empowering questions that could be asked. So here's, I have a lot, but here's two ideas. Um, You could ask yourself how many drinks and how often fits for the lifestyle I'm creating. And see how that question is what you're creating about your future and not basing it on any past experiences. Another empowering question could be, why do you want to drink in any given situation? And I don't mean why to judge yourself or judge anyone around you. It's to be able to take a clear look at your intention. And both of these questions are matters of lifestyle and situations. So it's where you can start to define what a drinking plan looks like for you. And I say drinking plan, I'm literally talking about going to pen and paper and having a plan for different situations where you might have different intentions and having that educated guess of what you would like for yourself and your body in those situations. So I don't freak out when I say plan. I don't think there's that many situations to draw up. But here's a few that I run into often. Um, Intimate date night might be a different drinking plan than time spent with girlfriends. 
And that's still going to be different again when you're on vacation and there's nowhere to drive and no work needing to be accomplished in the near future. So those are just a few situations that we all commonly run into or that can have different drink plans. And then if you're anything like me, you'll make a beautiful plan and it won't work. That first plan or the fifth plan or the sixth plan was an educated guess. Nothing has gone wrong when it doesn't work the first time. We just need to refine things a little bit. This is the scientific method, right? Make an educated guess. When it doesn't work, it doesn't mean throw in the towel. It means change one thing and try again and test. Then change one thing and try again and test. It's a process of noticing your own subconscious habits in different situations. And it's a process of learning to listen to your body. And it's a process of having grace and compassion with yourself and rolling with it. But it's just an educated guess. And there's no need to have judgment attached to where you are in the process of becoming the next amazing version of yourself. Nothing has gone wrong. You are in the process. And know that when you look back at this educated guest process today, in this moment, when you look back from five years, from one year, from six months, you won't be in the same place. So what I wanted to ask you is, what is your plan? What is your personal formula? What is your best educated guess at this time that will help you create the life you love? Get your thoughts on paper, make a mess, make your own formula, make your best educated guess. Mess and guess. I was not meaning for that to rhyme, but but there we are. So that's what I have for you today. Next week on Tasting Tuesday, we will be talking about a Chilean Sauvignon Blanc. So pick one up or just listen along. And if anything's coming up for you about making that plan, I, of course, do teach everything on the podcast at a deeper level. I have a one-on-one coaching program tailored to your needs where we cover how to stop over drinking, how to love yourself for all the right reasons, and emotional well-being. Go to kellydoherty.com slash cheers to learn more. That's Kelly Doherty, K-E-L-L-Y-D-O-H-E-R-T-Y dot com forward slash cheers.